Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Now is the time to trim your lamps and get ready for the coming of the Lord. Stay tuned for the Midnight Cry broadcast. You know, weeping isn't necessarily some five-minute experience. Sometimes there is a season during which there is weeping, and then there's still weeping, and there's weeping. But God's promise always is morning is coming. I know where you're at. I understand. Right now, this is where you need to be. It's bringing you to a place of, of reaching out to me, and I'm doing something in you during this. But, oh, my end product is joy. That's where I want to bring you. I don't get any special kicks out of putting you in a difficult place. It's the, this, just is the, this is the only way that I can get you to where I want you to be. So you can really partake of all my joy and just rejoice and it won't, it'll do you good and not harm. It won't spoil you. A lot of Christians want to be spoiled. We just want a cotton candy experience. But God is wiser than all that, isn't he? But oh, David's testimony, you turned my wailing into dancing. Oh, what a difference it is when suddenly the Lord comes on the scene and sometimes you see things different, but sometimes he arranges the experiences. Whatever it is, he brought David right back to a place where he went from crying and, be, and bemoaning his fate to dancing and shouting. And You know, David could dance, couldn't he? He upset one of his wives one time. She thought he was a fool. And he says, I'll be even more foolish yet. I'm going to praise God. Bless God, I'm not going to hold back. Praising God. He is awesome. You removed my sackcloth. Now, you know, sackcloth was a, a sign of somebody who was in serious mourning about something. I mean, if they were, they were in that kind of a place, they would literally tear their clothes and put on sackcloth and, and just sit there and, I don't know, it was a pity party or what it was, but whatever it was, it was a bad place. He says, the Lord took off, took off that, you know, get, off, get that silly sackcloth off of here. Enough of that. I'm going to clothe you with something a whole lot better than sackcloth. I've got joy. There's garments that, are, that represent joy. I, that's what I really want for you in the end. That's what I desire for you. That my heart may sing to you and not be silent. Oh, Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Praise God. So say, anybody identify with David in these things? You think this is just David? You think this is... I tell you, we serve a Lord of whom it was said that he was a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. His life wasn't all roses either, was it? And he came to the ultimate night. But you know, there's something about his experience that we could look at, we can see the perspective of what's really going on here through the eyes of somebody who knew what was going on. That's the thing. So much of the time we go into these experiences, we don't know. We just have to somehow trust God, like, like Job said, though he slay me yet, will I trust him? Well, they, Job had a pretty rough go of it. His friends didn't help much. But he, was, uh, he, went, so he got to some pretty low places. I mean, he got to the point where he said, I wish I'd never been born. Man, that would have been the best solution to all of this. None of this would have ever happened. I just wish I'd never been born. And the Lord just listened and waited. And exactly the right time, he came on the scene, didn't he? And the end, what was the end result for Job? Was it pretty good? Yes. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? And you see the pattern over and over in the scriptures where we talked about Joseph recently and the, the night that he went through it. I'm sure there was some weeping. You know, we, we sort of skim through the pages and it just kind of flows through the story. Years go by in, in the span of verses and, and we, don't, we don't have any idea of what all went on. But I can guarantee you there were some sleepless nights for Joseph. There was some serious weeping going on in his heart and his life. But something on the inside held him. I'll tell you, if your heart is open to him, God can put an anchor in your soul that will carry you through those times. And you may weep and you may mourn and you may even just, you know, it, put out all kinds of emotion. But the bottom line is, I'm going to trust you, Lord. You're my God. Where else am I going to go? And the testimony of his saints down through the ages is, God has, will bring you through. 
There is joy in the morning. Praise God. When I started to talk about Jesus and, and what he went through, he went to the cross, the ultimate dark night of the soul. But you know, he understood why he was going. He understood the Father's purpose. He understood that there was something. There was a, there was a glorious morning. Talk about the morning of all mornings. That was a, there was a glorious morning that was coming at the end of that. He, but he still had to go through it to get there. He even prayed, Father, if there's another way, I sure would like it, just to put it in our, our language. But still, I've, I'm, I, want, I want to do it your way, Lord. Not my will, yours be done. And you think about the anguish that he experienced in that to the point where he said, why have you forsaken me? Father, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I'm sure in that moment it felt like he had been forsaken. And it wasn't that his father had gone somewhere and aband truly abandoned him, but he did hide his face because he as the song was, sung, was often sung, he who knew no sin became sin for us. That we, through him, might become the righteousness of God. Praise God. Amen. Praise him for what he did. But what was it that enabled him to go through that? We're told in Hebrews chapter 12. What was it? There was joy, wasn't there? You see, that was a night, but there was, there was weeping. There was genuine weeping. He was not play acting. The, the agony of, that he went through was very, very real, and he did it for you and for me. He didn't do it because of himself. He did that willingly for you and for me. But he did it because he knew joy was coming. He understood the heart of God, that that's what he's after. He's not about suffering. He's about joy. Sometimes to get to joy, you've got to go through the suffering. And so Jesus came to that place at the end, and it was, there was joy unspeakable and full of glory. And his joy wasn't just selfish, was it? It wasn't that, oh, man, I'm out of here. I don't have to go through that again. Whew. No. The joy that was in his heart was because he saw you and he saw me. Man, that's, doesn't that reflect the heart of God? God is seeking to bring his children to a place where it's not just us and him, it's us and him. There is a sense of, of the community of the saints. And you see that in David's psalm here where he's, he's not just saying, uh, this isn't some private little thing. God, you got me through, praise God. This is saints, praise him. Let me tell you about what God is like. Let me tell you what I went through. So when you get in the middle of a night, you understand, yes, weeping may indeed endure for a night, but joy does come in the morning. So don't you ever give in during the times of weeping. Always remember God's heart toward you is to bring you to a place of joy. And it will happen. You stand fast and you look to God. And he'll bring you through. We certainly see it in Jesus and all that he willingly, all the sorrow he willingly bore. But oh, what joy. I'll tell you, and he's, I know there's, there's a sadness and a sorrow looking at the world, but I believe Jesus is so focused on the Father's plan even now. He is on a throne. He is ruling. He is reigning. In his rule and reign, he's allowing the world to do its thing for a time. But I'll tell you, he's ruling and reigning for his children, for us. Everyone has put their trust in him. He is on a throne right now, committed with every ounce of his being, with all the authority of God himself behind it to bring us to a place of ultimate joy. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I just want to go briefly to, to, to look down at the end of the story because, you know, as I said, this world is very cyclical. It's night and it's day and then it's night again, then it's day and then it's night again. And you're always, it seems like you're always going through cycles and that's a natural thing to this world. But where is God headed? What's the end result? Because we know that heaven and earth is going to pass away. This present world is destined for the fire, God has a day marked on his calendar, burn up the world. Get your, get your people out first, but burn up the world. <laughs> and that day is coming, folks. There will come that day. And there's going to be a judgment after that, and we're all going to stand there. 
And I'll tell you, those who stand there in white will not stand there because we have somehow measured up and earned his favor by anything we have done. We will have put our trust in, gra in his grace and his mercy. We will have come as helpless, broken, lost sinners who know that without him we will go to hell. We will have put our hope in him. And the things that we do to please him are done in his strength, of course, but they're also they're done because of what he's done, not to get it. Oh, I'll tell you, if you're in that place where you're trying to qualify, quit. You will never will. Jesus has already done all the qualifying it takes. So give your heart to him and give all the needs and the problems and the weeping and all of that to him. He's, he's big enough to handle it. Listen to what it says at the end. Chapter 21. This is, where we're, this is where it's all heading. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So God's got something planned that's way, way beyond this. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I'll tell you, just, just in that alone, God has made provision so that you and I, who make up his bride, we're going to be all that we need to be. We won't be dressed in anything we have, we have devised. We will be dressed in what he has provided, the perfect righteousness of God. Praise God. He's going to bring forth such beauty as we have not imagined. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. Folks, we have, a, we have a, a hope now and we have a hope then. Our hope now is that God has a reason why we go through seasons of night. We have a hope that always there is morning. Always, though the, the sun seems to have gone and we feel darkness and coldness, there's going to be dawn that's going to follow. As sure as night has followed day, day will also follow night. But oh, there's a, here's the end game here. Here's where God is heading with all this. There's going to be a dawn. And on that day, there will be no night to follow. No night to follow. You will see nothing but endless, endless day. Praise God. Praise God. This order that we know now, he says, it's going to pass away. You won't have it anymore. No more of any of that sort of thing. Oh, I'll tell you what, I, his, his saints that go right now, you think there's any more crying and weeping in heaven? We've got brothers and sisters that are over there waiting with us for that day, and it's going to come surely when all of this will be done away. But where they're at now, do you think there's any more mourning? Are there any nights of mourning and weeping? No, morning has dawned. Oh, folks, we have such a hope before us that he has, he has made by his righteousness. Praise God. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. It is done. Man, I like the sound of that. Not I plan to do this if I could pull it off. No, this is done. This is a decree of heaven. There is no one that can stand in the face of what God has decreed to happen, folks. I put my hope in that. My hope is not in me. My hope is not in anything in this world. Amen. My hope is in the promise of a God who cannot lie. Amen. He said this is going to do, be done away. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. He who overcomes will inherit all this, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. You go, let's see. Yeah, just look at a little bit of chapter 22. 
Then the angels showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. Everything that afflicts you in your body and your mind and spirit and me, every sickness, every sorrow, every tear is a, is a symptom of a cursed world because men chose to go their own way and say, God, I'm going to do my thing. I don't, want to, I don't want to serve you. I don't want to obey you. I'm going to seek my way. But I'll tell you, God has something for everyone that will turn from their way to his way, put their hope in him. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city and his servants will serve him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. How about that? No more. Oh, man, is that worth serving him in the hope of that? You know, we need to be realistic and realize that life is not always going to be morning here. We are going to have seasons of night, but always what God is pointing to is morning. One day it will be forever. No more night. Praise God. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. You won't even need the sun there, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Man, I'm almost encouraged. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I don't know where you're at today. There's, there's time here. I'm sure someone can, you know, perhaps have something to share, or we'll go get lunch early, or whatever the Lord has in mind. It'd be fine with me. But wherever you're at, I tell you, if you don't know the Lord, you've never put your trust in him, put, put your trust in him. You've got a lot of folks here. You've got a lot of folks in, in this book and throughout history will testify to what David testified. God is good. That even where there is weeping, there is joy that follows. And the joy is so real and so great that it makes the weeping worth it. Do we not sing the song, it will be worth it all? When we see Jesus, oh, I'll tell you, let the Lord open your heart to the reality of this, that it means you, that he's not looking for you to be something before he'll accept you. He accepts you just like you are. And he has the, he, he's the only one that can do the job of getting you ready. If you're in a place of night right now, God's word to you is joy comes in the morning. He's got joy already marked on his calendar for you. It's real. It's coming. If you're in a place of joy today, realize it's not just you and him. Live in such a way that you can, you can look at others and consider, consider where they're at and pray for them and support them and help them and encourage them with the encouragement God has given to you. Yes. Look what Paul's testimony was in 2 Corinthians. He talked about being in such a place of, of where he despaired even of life, but God did that so that he could, by the encouragement God had given him, he would be able to encourage others. Paul even saw that that kind of a dire situation as being as having a positive outcome in the kingdom of God. And so, you know, encourage others, lift them up. But for every one of us, oh, folks, let's lift our eyes from, what we're, from where we're at and see the end. Yeah. Always keep the goal in mind, what God has for us. There will come a day when morning will dawn, sorrow and tears will be gone forever. Joy will be there forever. Not only to be there forever, I mean, you know, the way we think now, we say, well, I get, that'll get boring after a while. It will never be boring. It will grow our capacity, will grow our appreciation for him. God will never run out of ways to delight his children. And we will forever just find our capacity to praise him and to love him and to worship him. It will just grow we can't, I mean, we can't even put it into words. John saw all this, and I, I, you almost sense at times he didn't know how to say it. It was put down into terms he could sort of understand and pictures he could understand. But God, but the reality behind it is there. God has joy, eternal joy in the morning for every one of his. And to him be the glory forever and ever. Praise the Lord.
This has been the Midnight Cry Broadcast. If you would like a DVD or a CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. DVDs are $10 and CDs are $5. And for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your request to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then.